Congratulations on the purchase of your new Chevrolet Sport Van. This audio presentation offers information on the operation of your standard equipment and accessories you may have added. It also offers some helpful tips for a sport van owner. Side 2 of this tape offers tips on the operation of the special options you may have purchased, as well as information and cautions when trailering with your vehicle. The presentation calls out only a few of the operational features of your new sport van. Complete and detailed information is presented in the owner's manual, which you should read and keep in your vehicle. To help you enhance the future performance and economy of your sport van, let's go over a few tips to follow during a break-in period. First, we recommend that you limit your speed during the first 500 miles to a maximum of 55 miles per hour, and be sure to vary your speed during this break-in period. This procedure allows many of the engine components to seat correctly for future performance. Second, avoid full throttle starts, and whenever possible, hard stops, especially during the first 200 miles of driving. Your new sport van is equipped with a four-wheel anti-lock brake system, or ABS. Anti-lock brake systems are designed to minimize lockup during braking by automatically modulating the brake pressure. As a special note, you may feel a pulsing on the brake pedal during a brake application that would cause the wheels to stop rolling. The anti-lock feature is designed to help you maintain control of the vehicle. Now let's look at your instrument cluster. If you have a diesel engine, be sure to listen to side two of this tape for information regarding its operation. There are several warning and indicator lights in your instrument cluster display, which you should always monitor. When you turn the ignition to the start position, all your warning and indicator lights will briefly illuminate. This is simply a bulb and system check. After a few seconds, all the lights will go out. If a light remains illuminated, it could mean a system malfunction. Your anti-lock and conventional brake systems have two lights that monitor their functions, an anti-lock light and a brake warning light. The anti-lock light may remain on for up to four or five seconds when you start your vehicle. This is normal. If this light remains illuminated or comes on again while driving, the anti-lock feature of the braking system may not be working correctly. The anti-lock light only applies to the anti-lock feature of your brake system. If this light is illuminated, you still have conventional brakes. It is only the anti-lock feature which may not be operational. If this is the case, see your Chevrolet dealer for a system check. If the brake warning light remains illuminated or comes on while driving, it could indicate a possible malfunction of the conventional braking system in which case you should carefully pull off the road since it may take longer to stop the vehicle. The brake light also illuminates if the parking brake is not fully released. If the brake light is illuminated, check to see that your parking brake is fully released. Your service engine soon light monitors the computer command control of your new sport van. If this light comes on intermittently or continuously while driving, the vehicle can be driven in most cases, but you should visit an authorized Chevrolet service department as soon as possible to have the computer command control system checked out. Three gauges you should pay particular attention to are the oil, voltmeter, and coolant temperature gauges. Operating your sport van with any of the gauges reading excessively high or low could damage your engine or engine components. Now we would like to offer some fuel and starting tips. You'll find diesel information on side two of this cassette. The fuel gauge registers the approximate fuel level in the tank. The standard fuel tank capacity is about 22 gallons on the 10 series sport vans. On 20 and 30 series sport vans, the fuel tank capacity is about 33 gallons. With gasoline engines, use regular grade unleaded fuel with a minimum octane rating of 87. And if you use a methanol or ethanol fuel blend, be sure to see the owner's manual for proper mixture recommendations. To start your engine, just rotate the ignition key to the start position. Don't depress the gas pedal. You could flood the engine if you depress the gas pedal during starting. If the engine does not start in three seconds, depress the accelerator pedal to one quarter throttle and turn the key again. If the engine still does not start, it may be flooded. Wait about 15 seconds for the starter to cool. Then depress the gas pedal to the floor and hold it there while cranking the engine for a maximum of 12 seconds. This should clear the engine. 
As a special note, don't crank the engine for more than 15 seconds at a time, and be sure to wait 15 seconds before trying again. This will help prevent damage to the starter. Be sure to read Section 2 of the Owner's Manual for hot or cold engine restart techniques. Well, Section 6 offers additional information on fuel, oil, and fluid capacities. The trip odometer records your mileage for either record keeping or monitoring fuel economy. Pressing the stem in on the speedometer face and turning it clockwise will reset the trip odometer to zero. The headlights, taillights, and side marker lights are operated by a three position switch on the left of the instrument cluster. Pulling this knob out to the first position will engage your parking lights, tail lights, instrument panel, and side marker lights. Pulling it out all the way engages your headlights. By rotating this knob, you can control the light intensity of your instrument panel lights when the parking or headlights are illuminated. Rotating the knob fully counterclockwise will turn on the interior lights. High and low beams of the headlights are controlled by the turn signal lever. Besides signaling turns, this lever also controls the operation of the windshield wipers and washers. The delay wipers allow you to vary the wiper sweep up to an approximate 16 second delay. The closer the wiper control band is to the low position, the more often the wipers will move. The low and high positions provide continuous wiper action. The emergency or hazard warning flashers are controlled by a button underneath the ignition switch. To engage the flashers, push the button in. To disengage them, pull out on the collar surrounding the button. For your convenience and accessibility, the fuse panel is located beneath the instrument cluster on the driver's side. Refer to section two in the owner's manual for additional information on lighting features and controls, while section six shows a photograph of fuse locations. The automatic four-speed overdrive transmission is designed to make your driving as easy as possible. The Circle D overdrive position allows the transmission to choose the appropriate gear for load and driving conditions and should be used in most driving situations. The D drive position should be used for increased performance when towing a trailer or driving on hilly roads if you notice excessive shifting between gears. The D drive position should also be used on slippery surfaces to avoid an unexpected downshift. When road conditions improve, shift back to the Circle D overdrive position. You'll find that the second gear position provides additional power for hill climbing or engine braking. In addition, if you have a sport van with a gross vehicle weight rating under 8,600 pounds, starting from second gear will limit the torque to your rear wheels for better traction on slippery surfaces and minimize wheel spin at very low speeds. The gross vehicle weight rating can be found on the certification label at the rear edge of the driver's door. The first gear position is for maximum engine braking, like when you're driving or towing a trailer down a steep hill or maximum engine torque when driving through deep snow or mud. When you leave your truck, place your transmission in park and then make sure you set the parking brake located to the left of the brake pedal. To disengage the parking brake, use the release at the lower left side of the instrument panel. Section four of the owner's manual offers additional information on parking and leaving your vehicle. On non-air conditioned models, your new sport van is equipped with easily operated ventilation and heating controls. To allow outside air into the interior, simply place the heater control in the vent position. Additional air vents are located in the kick panels. These are opened or closed with handles on the vent. At the left of the heater control panel, you'll notice the heater fan control. There are two slide levers on your heater. The upper slide lever controls air distribution to either the upper vents, lower heater, or defrost outlets. The lower slide lever allows you to adjust the temperature setting. For control of the interior airflow, place the upper lever next to the mode you wish to use. The defrost mode directs most air to the upper defrost outlets. The heater mode directs most air to the lower heater outlets for maximum heating. Placing the upper sliding lever in the blend position distributes the air between the floor and windshield outlets. Your electronically tuned AM FM stereo radio has some very convenient functions like speaker balance and bass treble adjustments. On the AM FM stereo, the seek button allows you to seek out the next available station. 
The scan button allows you to briefly sample all the radio stations available. If you find a station you enjoy, quickly tap the scan button again to lock that station in. To preset 4 AM and 4 FM stations, first find your favorite station by using the tuning knob or seek and scan controls. Then, to lock in that station, press the set button and within five seconds, one of the numbered buttons. If you wish to preset more than 4 AM or FM stations, you can combine the numbered buttons to expand your preset station selections by pressing two adjacent buttons simultaneously, like buttons 1 and 2, 2 and 3, or 3 and 4. To set your electronic clock, you must use the Set, Seek, and Scan buttons. When you push the Set button, a set indicator light will illuminate. Within five seconds, press the Scan button to set the correct hour. By pressing the set button again within five seconds, you can use the seek button to set the minutes. If you plan on using your van for transporting cargo, be sure to check section one of the owner's manual for removal of your rear seats. A check assembly or door stop on your rear doors prevent them from opening further than desired. To bypass this check assembly, close the door slightly to remove tension from the holding pin and then lift the pin up and swing the check assembly free. Be sure to secure all the items in your vehicle prior to driving. Cargo weight in the rear area of your vehicle should be located as far forward as possible. Don't pile cargo or luggage higher than the seat backs. With the rear seats removed, you can use the seat anchor pins in the floor anchor plates to tie cargo down. If you're going to pull a trailer, see section four of the owner's manual and be sure to listen to side two of this audio cassette for trailer towing information. If you need to tow your sport van, see section five in the owner's manual. When it comes to maintenance of your new sport van, different driving situations require different scheduled service intervals. There are two different maintenance schedules for you to follow depending upon how you drive your new vehicle. For example, Schedule 2 generally applies to highway type driving, where the engine is warmed up to normal operating temperatures and there is minimal stop and go driving. On the other hand, Schedule 1 is applicable when your vehicle is used for short trips, towing a trailer, driving in cold or dusty situations, and frequent stop and go driving. Be sure to read the maintenance schedule section 7 of the owner's manual. This section will help you select the correct maintenance intervals and procedures for your driving conditions. By following the appropriate maintenance schedule, you'll help preserve your investment in a quality vehicle. One very important self-maintenance procedure you should do is check the oil level every fuel fill-up, preferably when the engine oil is warm. For more detailed information on checking your oil, using the correct weight or viscosity of oil, inspecting the coolant, washer, and transmission fluid levels, along with other self-maintenance procedures, read section 7 in the owner's manual. The cloth fabric of your seats and door trim have been treated with Scotchgard Fabric Protector. A quick wipe with a damp sponge or cloth will clean most spills. For detailed information on stain cleaning procedures, refer to Section 6 in your owner's manual. Your spare tire is stowed either behind the last seat of the vehicle or on the right side of the rear cargo area. As a special note, you should occasionally check the air pressure in your spare tire. Be sure to read Section 5 of the Owner's Manual for the operation of your jack and the correct procedures to remove or replace a tire. The owner's literature found in the exclusive Chevy Sport Van portfolio contains important information. In the portfolio, you'll find your owner's manual, warranty information, a separate warranty for your tires from their manufacturer, and spaces for business cards of key contacts at your Chevrolet dealership. If you have any additional questions after reviewing the literature, please call our toll-free customer assistance center at 1-800-222-1020. In addition, your vehicle is covered by Chevrolet's 24-hour roadside service. By calling 1-800-243-8872, which is the same as 1-800-CHEV-USA, you'll have access to emergency services like towing, tire changing, locksmith services, and more for as long as you own your sport van. Your vehicle has many other standard features designed to make driving a delightful experience. So take some time to explore the interior and exterior of your new sport van.
We would like to remind you that on side two of this tape, you'll find additional information and operational tips about the special options you may have purchased to customize your new sport van and information on the use of child restraint devices. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this audio presentation. And again, congratulations on the purchase of your new Chevy sport van. Side two of this audio tape discusses trailering tips, cautions, and special options you may have purchased to customize your new sport van. There will be a few seconds of silence between each selection. Child restraint procedures. For the safety of children and infants traveling in your vehicle, you should always secure them in an infant or child seat restraint according to applicable laws. The information or instructions included with the infant or child seat will specify whether it should be used with an infant or an older child. With General Motors truck safety belts, there is no additional equipment necessary to secure the child or infant seat restraint in your vehicle unless the restraint requires a top anchor as specified by the restraint installation instructions. There are some very important procedures to follow when transporting an infant or child in your vehicle. A few tips to remember are, first, never hold a baby in your arms while you're riding in a vehicle. In a collision or sudden stop, the child would become almost impossible to hold. Second, when using a child seat restraint system, be sure to follow the manufacturer's instructions for the restraint. These restraints use the belt system of your vehicle, but the child also has to be secured within the child seat restraint to help reduce the chance of personal injury the child seat restraint must be properly secured. Third, if your child restraint has a top strap, it will need to be anchored. You can have your GM dealer install an anchor bracket, or your dealer can instruct you on the installation procedures if you want to install the anchor yourself. If the child restraint has a top strap, always secure the restraint device at the location where the top strap can be anchored. Finally, be sure to properly secure any child seat restraint device in your vehicle even when no passenger is in it. An unsecured child seat can move around in a collision or sudden stop and injure people in the vehicle. For complete information on installing a child or infant restraint system in your vehicle, be sure to read section one of the owner's manual. This information is of vital importance for the safety of you and your passengers. Trailering tips. Your new Chevy Sport Van is a versatile vehicle designed to carry people and cargo. But bear in mind that towing a trailer and or carrying cargo will affect handling, durability, and fuel economy. The certification label on the inner trailing edge of the driver's door offers information on maximum gross vehicle weight, maximum gross axle weights your vehicle can safely handle, and recommended tire inflation pressures. The maximum loaded trailer weight your vehicle can tow depends upon the total weight of the vehicle, including passengers, cargo, and additional options purchased. To learn more about the trailering aspects of your vehicle, your Chevy dealer can supply you with product literature, which includes trailering tips and cautions, and can assist you in determining that your needs don't exceed the load or trailering capabilities of your new vehicle. The type of hitch you have is very important. If you have an aftermarket hitch, make sure it is properly installed and adjusted. Two very important hitch considerations for trailer weights over 2,000 pounds are that one, the hitch is a frame-mounted weight distributing hitch, and two, you install a sway control system of adequate capacity. Improper trailering or not following recommended trailering tips and cautions may cause handling problems. On trailer weights over 1,000 pounds, you should have trailer brakes. See section 4 in the owner's manual for precautions and special techniques to use when towing a trailer. Tilt wheel and electronic cruise control. To operate the tilt wheel, pull the short lever on the steering column behind the turn signal lever toward you and adjust the steering wheel. The multifunction turn signal lever also regulates the operation of cruise control. To engage the cruise control, first turn it on, then accelerate to the desired speed and push the set button on the end of the turn signal lever. The cruise control disengages when you depress the brake or move the control switch to the off position. The off position will erase the memory of the cruise control.
To resume your preset speed after braking, momentarily move the switch to the RA Resume Accelerate position. At speeds above 25 miles per hour, the system automatically recalls your preset speed. For more information on cruise control, see Section 2 in the Owner's Manual. Diesel engine and diesel lights. If you purchase the optional diesel engine, there are special fuel requirements, starting and maintenance procedures, and indicator lights of which you should be aware. With a diesel engine, your vehicle is designed to use either number 1D or 2D diesel fuel. Use 2D fuel whenever possible. During temperatures less than 20 degrees Fahrenheit, use 1D fuel or a winterized 2D fuel. On your instrument panel, you'll find three lights for your diesel engine. These lights are the glow plugs, water in fuel, and low coolant indicators. When the glow plugs light is illuminated, you must wait to start the diesel engine. When this light goes out, the engine can be started. The water in fuel light warns you of excessive water in the fuel system. If the low coolant light illuminates while driving, you should have the radiator coolant level checked. Operating with low coolant can cause engine overheating and possible engine damage. Do not remove the radiator pressure cap until the engine has cooled. Remember that diesel engines start differently than gasoline engines. To start your vehicle, place the gear selector lever in either the park or neutral position. Turn the ignition key to the run position and wait for the glow plugs light to go out. If the engine is warm, this light may not illuminate. Press the accelerator pedal all the way down, then release it. With your foot removed from the accelerator pedal, turn the key to the start position. And when the engine starts, release the key. Pumping the accelerator pedal before or during cranking will not aid in starting the vehicle. In fact, pumping could keep the engine from starting. During an extended idle when it is cold outside, your heater may discharge cold air. By driving your vehicle at higher speeds or higher load conditions, the coolant will warm up and the heater will begin to function normally. Remember, too, that a low coolant level may also cause the heater to discharge cold air. Be sure to see the owner's manual, sections 2 and 6, for further information regarding starting, fuel system water draining procedures, and recommended fuel usage. Air conditioning. Besides the heating and ventilation controls described on side one of this tape, there are additional controls for the air conditioner. The upper air temperature sliding lever allows you to handle various cooling and heating requirements. The lower sliding lever allows a selection of air temperatures from cold at the far left to hot at the far right. For maximum cooling, the max AC position recirculates interior air with some outside air. Use this position with the temperature lever in the full left cold position. The norm AC position pulls in outside air, cools it, and then discharges it through the upper dashboard outlets. Between the heater and defrost modes, the blend position directs air through the defrost vents and instrument panel outlets. Rear air conditioning. If you have optional rear air conditioning, both the front and rear air conditioning units use the same refrigerant. The blower switch above the main air conditioning controls operates the rear cooling unit. To operate the rear unit, turn the main air conditioner to the norm, max, or bi-level position, and select the fan speed on the rear air conditioner control. With the air conditioning system off, the fan in the rear unit may be used to circulate interior air. Rear heater. The rear heater supplies heat when its fan control switch is in any position except off. In the off position, a coolant control valve automatically closes to prevent unwanted heat during warm weather. The three-speed fan switch that operates the rear heater is located in the instrument panel above the main heater controls. AM FM stereo radio with Seek scan and digital clock with stereo cassette tape player. 
To play an audio tape, insert it with the exposed edge entering first. The tape will snap into position when fully inserted. Forward and reverse arrows allow you to move through your tape quickly. The DNR, Dynamic Noise Reduction button, reduces background hiss on both the radio and cassette tapes. To switch playing sides of the tape without removing it, press the upper left volume control knob. Avoid using C120 tapes in your player. These tapes are very thin and may break or get tangled in the drive mechanism. For information and maintenance tips for your tape player, see Section 3 of the Owner's Manual. AM Stereo, FM Stereo Radio with Seek Scan and Digital Clock and Stereo Cassette Tape Player with Search, Repeat and Graphic Equalizer. To play an audio tape, insert it with the exposed edge entering first. The tape will snap into position when fully inserted. To advance the tape, press the forward button. To rewind to an earlier portion of the tape, press the reverse button. To stop the forward or reverse movement, press the opposite button lightly. To listen to the next selection on a cassette tape, first slide the search button to the right and then depress the forward button. The tape will automatically stop at the next selection. By using the reverse button, you can replay the tape selection which you just played. To switch playing sides of the tape without removing it, press the upper left volume control knob. The loudness button boosts the bass frequencies when the stereo is played at low volumes. The CRO2, chromium dioxide button, adjusts the audio quality for chromium or metal tapes. And the AMST button is for AM stereo broadcasts. The graphic equalizer adjusts the frequency response ranges of your stereo. Avoid using C120 tapes in your player. These tapes are very thin and may break or get tangled in the drive mechanism. For information and maintenance tips for your tape player, see section 3 of the owner's manual. Engine block heater. This feature is designed to keep your engine block warm for improved cold weather starting. To use the heater, open the hood and unwrap the electrical cord stowed in the engine compartment. Plug the cord into any 3-prong 110 volt AC outlet. If the cord is too short, use a heavy-duty 3-prong extension cord. Remote Keyless Entry System with the remote keyless entry system, locking and unlocking your vehicle is as easy as touching a button. This feature also provides illuminated entry. There are three buttons on your remote control unit. Pressing the unlock button once will open the driver's door. Pressing this same button once again will unlock the passenger and side door of the vehicle. Pressing the rear door symbol button will unlock the rear door, but only when the transmission is in park. And finally, pressing the key symbol button will lock all the doors. For additional information on this convenience feature, be sure to consult your owner's manual. This completes side two of this audio cassette. We thank you for taking the time to listen. And again, congratulations on the purchase of your sport van. <laughs>